This is the story about the Yellow Aster Mine. It was in the late fall of 1894 that two prospectors, Frederick Moores and William Langdon, were out prospecting in the Rand Mountain Range in the Mojave when they came across some traces of gold. Being late in the year, they decided to wait until the spring and then they would go and take another look. In the spring of the following year, Moores went back out along with another couple prospectors, John Singleton and Charles Bircham. It was on this prospecting trip they discovered a gold vein that came right up to surface on top of Rand Mountain. Once the three men got back, they decided to start the Yellow Aster Mining and Milling Company and proceeded to start mining this gold vein out. Of course, word got out about these three men who found a gold vein and it wasn't long before more miners and prospectors were snooping around in the area. At the time, there was no real town here, so miners just lived in tents, but by the end of 1896, there was over 1,500 people living in the valley beside Rand Mountain. This small tent town became known as Randsburg and it serviced the many small mines that had sprung up around this discovery. Soon surveyors came and laid out a town site, and lots were selling on the main street for as high as $500. As the lots continued to advance in price, and with the influx of people, there were quite a few lot jumpers who tried to steal town lots. By 1899, the town had over 3,500 residents. During the year of 1897, over $600,000 worth of gold had been mined in this area, with most of that gold coming from the Yellow Aster Mine. There were rumors at the time that Charles Lane, who was the wealthiest miner on all the Pacific coast, came to Randsburg and offered the three miners, Moores, Bircham, and Singleton $650,000 for a quarter interest in their property. When mining first started, the gold ore was loaded on mule trains and shipped out to Garlock or Barstow, which was quite a ways. Then, in 1898, a 28-mile railway was built and ore was shipped out by train. This helped in processing the ore, but the cost of milling and transport added up, so in 1899, the company built a 30-stamp mill close to the mine. This stamp mill proved to be a moneymaker for the mine, so in 1901, the company built a new 100-stamp mill. By this time, the mine was producing over $120,000 worth of gold a month. That would be equivalent to about $4 million today. There was no water in Randsburg, so water was hauled in by wagon at a cost of one cent a gallon. The mine, of course, needed water for the milling, so water was drawn from wells, but these wells were over 300 feet deep. One of the mines in the Rand Mining District, owned by the Olympus Mining Company, sunk a well 100 feet deep and got a 2-inch flow, so it ended up piping water into Randsburg, a distance of 10 miles. In September 1902, there were about 200 men working the Yellow Aster Mine and close to 1,000 miners working between the other mines in the Rand District. The miners voted to strike for higher wages, and all miners and all the mines walked off the jobs. The Yellow Aster Mine did not want to give the muckers a raise from two fifty a day to three bucks and decided to just close the mine. Other mines in the area closed as well. A few months later the mine brought in non-union miners and commenced mining again, but the mill was still shuttered. By October the following year, the mine and mill were running full capacity and some of the old miners who were on strike started to return. The mine was now paying union wages, but without the union involved. All the mining was done by hand, and carts of ore were loaded and pushed down narrow gauge rails inside the mine. By 1905, the mine had about 15 miles of underground rail track. The mine also found itself in a position where it had to increase tonnage, because the ore was becoming lower grade. It was a few years later that the mine purchased a 15-horsepower gasoline locomotive. This would be the first gasoline-powered locomotive ever used in a mine in California. This small train could haul 30 tons at a time and travel up to 6 miles per hour, and with a 100-stamp mill running, 580 to 600 tons of ore were being milled daily. Over time, the mine converted to electric and newer crushers and processing equipment was installed. Between 1895 and 1939, 
more than 3,400,000 tons of ore was milled, and about 500,000 ounces of gold was recovered, nearly all by amalgamation. In addition, 1,700,000 tons of milled tailings was treated and yielded 41,000 ounces of gold. Today you can still drive to Randsburg and see the old mill and mine. The old head frame and mill building still stands. Piles of tailings can be seen in the hills from the various mines, and there are still a few people who call Randsburg home. I hope you enjoyed this short story about the old yellow aster mine. Please like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you more old lost mine stories. Music